Ever since Vince Gilligan's Breaking Bad became a smash hit in 2008, the crime genre has had something of a renaissance on the smaller screen. We've had Power, True Detective, and Netflix's own Narcos to name a few. One of the newer releases, Ozark, is a collaboration between the always reliable Jason Bateman and creators Bill Dubuque and Mark Williams. The 30 episodes so far follow successful businessman and negotiator Martin Burt, who finds himself in debt to the ruthless Camino del Rio, played by S.A. Morales, after his business skims off some laundered money owed to him. Desperate to save himself and his family, Marty cuts a deal with the ruthless crime lord to relocate down to the Ozarks in Missouri, set up shop, and continue to launder money all the way to the finish line. So begins season one as the birds head down south and start to make this lakeside their personal crime syndicate. It's a four-person family, with Marty's wife Wendy, played by Laura Linney, and their two children Charlotte and Jonah, played by Sophia Hublitz and Skylar Gartner respectively. The unit quickly falls in with the locals, most notably the Langmore family, a downtrodden group who find themselves caught up in the bird scheming. Ozark wastes no time in getting started, quickly establishing the main players and the hellish debt they need to pay off. It also sets itself apart as early as the second episode with one simple choice. Your father's laundering money for a Mexican drug cartel. Shit, you're not. Afterwards, Ozark builds itself on a dramatic tension, but unlike its contemporaries, the series is based in more covert and distant territory. While complicit in the crimes of the cartel, Marty, Wendy, and eventually their children don't participate in its affairs head on. Instead, they carefully plan, scheme, and craft business ventures to assist their laundering. Along the way, they run into all kinds of obstacles, from the FBI coming in to investigate, to rival crime families who have lived on the land for years. It's a constant web of competition, missteps, and bad decisions that sends the narrative flying every which way. A brilliant means to create all the twists and turns across the seasons. Thematically, the series explores the ethics of business, the impactful ties of family history, and the nature of poverty in the American South. When Marty and Wendy first arrive in the titular setting, they stick out like a sore thumb, having lived comfortably in Chicago for a long time. This clashes against the run-down, often grotty livelihoods of the other characters. Your sympathies will be cast all over the place over the course of the seasons, as hardships are felt and schemes change hands. On top of this, the slow and steady way the birds work their way into business is a persistent driving force for the narrative. They start off at modest establishments and continue upwards from there. I found success, and I know money. I know how to make it work. I know how to get it. I have it, and I'm willing to invest it in you. The characters in the series base their plotting around careful negotiations and putting decisions in place that often have far-reaching consequences. As a result, Ozark is very heavy on dialogue, yet you'll want to listen in on every word. Seeing Marty and the other characters try to talk their way out of gritty situations is one of the series' main hooks, and it's just one part of the superb writing that populates the show. Even the side characters, like the elderly buddy who lives in the basement and proves far kindlier than he seems, will keep you invested in the full character set. Well-rounded, memorable, and distinct, just about every main cast member is on top form. Take Ruth Langmore, played brilliantly by Julia Garner. She's a strong-willed individual who doesn't take crap from anyone, and yet she also cares deeply for her family and the cycle of poverty they've been trapped in. Move on. That cash isn't worth the paper it's printed on if I don't know how to clean it. You're the smartest person this side of Mississippi. Anything you don't know yet, you'll figure. In short, the characters have a humanity to them that lies beneath their more rugged exteriors. There comes a point where they all crack under the pressure. Even the younger actors get their time in the spotlight, showing the strain the situation places them under. While in other efforts, kid characters can drag the plot down, here, they're playing an active role in the story all the way through, wising up to the plans their parents put together. By contrast, the antagonists are divided into both overt and covert categories. While an immediate threat often comes from the locals, the greater danger lingers in the background, as the representatives of the cartel hang over the setting like a hawk. 
They're both sinister and calculating, drastically enhancing the tension that runs through the veins of the series. Trying to juggle so many needs and desires is never an easy task, and that's made apparent in the show's second season. The cartel brings in their top lawyer, Helen Pierce, to keep everyone in line for future dealing, and her unflinching approach as the middle woman will keep you guessing. The same is also true for the Kansas City Mafia, who steps in as a supplier for the cartel's product, further complicating the crime network. Both of these entities run through the bird's grand plan for the season, getting a casino up and running for the mob to use. This effort is showcased through both local action and political bureaucracy, as Wendy makes use of her previous experience to sway several officials in her favour. As we learn more about the history behind each of the characters, the family bonds go deeper, particularly for the Langmores and Snells. The former grapples with their history of crime as Ruth's brutal father enters the picture, and the latter faces the prospect of losing their position and hold over the land, causing some very drastic actions to be taken. With its action already established, Season 2 presses on very well, deepening its characters throughout. Season 3 picks the birds up at their highest point yet, a commanding force of the big business that flows through the Ozarks. Initially, friction shows between Marty and Wendy as the latter seeks to assert her savviness for scheming on a greater level. But then, a wrench is thrown into the works, something all of Marty and Wendy's verbal sparring can't overcome, the painful onset of debilitating mental illness. Wendy's brother Ben, played by Tom Pelfrey, delivers an intense portrait of a man suffering from bipolar disorder that creates deep fractures within both the family and their partners. Went behind my back and told her that I stopped taking my meds. She deserved to know. Mm. I was going to tell her myself. Mm. I was. You stole that from me. In addition, dangers also spring up with the Kansas crime family, personified by the violent Frank Jr., played by Joseph Sakura. With these elements mixed with the rising threat of the escalating drug war, Ozark's third outing is by far the best. The characters are forced to confront their actions and reveal their secrets more than ever, and the final episodes are utterly heart-wrenching. There are some incredibly powerful performances here, especially from Laura Linney and Skylar Gartner, whose raw emotions are put front and centre towards the end. Without giving anything away, the series plants the seeds for its next outing with a capable and focused effort all around. All in all, Ozark is an excellent series from beginning to end. It sets itself apart from its contemporaries by offering some sharp dialogue alongside deep characters that are underpinned by the thematic resonance of class conflict. With its endlessly tense narrative based on choice and consequence, it shouldn't be missed. With a fourth season sure to be on the way in a year or so, what are you waiting for? I give it a full 5 out of 5 stars.